I'm Erin Hardig, Z-Prime's lead research analyst. I'm here in Washington, D.C. at the Grid Connects conference, joined by Kristen Brown. She is the principal of innovation and partnerships at Exelon Utilities. How are you today, Kristen? I'm doing very well. It's exciting to be here. Thanks, Erin. So, can you tell us what are some of these innovative areas that utilities are looking at today? We hear a lot of buzzwords in the industry. Um, artificial intelligence, VR, AR, but what are you seeing utilities uh, looking at in terms of innovative technologies? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think there's two parts to that. One is what does innovation mean and whether thinking about innovative technologies is the right question. And for us, there's a couple ways to think about that. The first is we look at all the same innovative technologies that a lot of the utilities think of. You mentioned a number of them and you can include things like Internet of Things in there as well, battery storage, et cetera. Those are interesting technologies, but they really form the basis for what we think about as consumer innovation. So when we consider innovation, it's what does it mean for new customer programs, new rate designs, and new regulatory frameworks. And a lot of those technologies help inform our views around meeting our customers in new and different ways. Traditionally, the utility industry has been kind of risk averse, but now we're seeing utilities become very innovative and explore new business models. What advice do you have for utilities that are looking at innovation and exploring new business models? Yeah, that's a great question. So the team that I'm on, Innovation and Partnerships, is part of a new broader strategy and policy team at Exelon. And what we've really found is it's critical to increase the collaboration around innovation as early as possible. My background is in early stage technology development, so I can bring in conversations around what new companies are doing, what academics are doing in national labs. But if that's disconnected from what our policy teams are doing and what our grid investment teams are doing, then we're not moving forward with a consistent vision and that doesn't serve us well and that certainly doesn't serve our customers or our third parties well. So fundamentally, what we found is key and what, what I think we see other utilities doing, and if, and if not, they should be, is really bringing all those collaborative efforts together as early as possible so we're all aware of the same movement and growth of the ecosystem. Let's talk about a particular technology right now, and that is blockchain. Um, blockchain is an, it's very emerging for utilities, but I think a, a lot of utilities still aren't sure how to leverage blockchain in a, in a meaningful, useful way. What are you seeing as some of the blockchain use cases uh, within utilities? Yeah, so our, our blockchain journey has been really interesting. It started with a mandate to look at the combination of distributed ledger technology or blockchain and distributed energy resources. And very quickly, a couple years ago, we realized that the technology wasn't really there for a viable business model. Since then, what we've seen is, of course, an increased opportunity and maturity of the technology and increased interest from our senior team. So on the wholesale side under our generation units, there's a lot of interest in renewable energy credits and things like natural gas procurement, which require a lot of transparency and standardization and ideally should move more towards an automated system. On the distribution side, there are a couple things that we're looking at. One is internal ways to save O&M from reporting energy efficiencies in interesting area there, as well as supply chain management. And for us as well, a lot of the blockchain use cases that we're looking at have to do with bringing in different types of parties, connecting what the utility is doing with what the regulators are looking for with what services third parties want to integrate and our um, our look at energy efficiency and some peer-to-peer -peer trading use cases fall into that example. We're seeing DER penetration and utility service territories just continue to increase. How will blockchain enable DERs in, in a better way? Yeah, so that's always an interesting question because to, to your earlier point, there's uncertainty and confusion around whether blockchain is necessary. And a lot of times, like I alluded to before, the answer might be that it's not and that there are easier and more cost-effective ways today to do it. Where I see blockchain becoming really important is when you start stacking different applications and different functions on top of each other. So with, with DER integration, there's a couple different components that I think blockchain brings to the table as a single system. 
One is the asset tracking and recording of those assets and providing them with unique IDs and unique sets of rules. The second is providing transparency across multiple stakeholders around what those assets are. And those stakeholders could include the distribution utility. In our case, it includes our transmission operator and it includes the regulator. And furthermore, when we talk about DERs from a customer standpoint, interesting new business models are arising around blockchain that really push value out to the individual customer in helping compensate them for their specific applications and their specific DER. When you stack all of those together, I think you have a really compelling blockchain use case and that will help drive further investment in, in some interesting business model evolution. I have to ask because we're in December 2018, that means the new year is just around the corner. What are you looking forward to the most about 2019? Exelon, and Anne spoke earlier at, at the conference we're at now, Exelon's undergoing a new effort around a connected community's vision and really figuring out new ways to meet the needs of our consumers and become more involved in the communities that we serve. I think 2019 is when we'll start to see a lot of action from us as a company in putting out some neat and interesting projects. On the blockchain side, you know, I think a number of entities have launched new projects and we'll start seeing real data and real business cases. So we're finally getting to a point where we'll understand a lot more about the potential of some of these emerging technologies. Well, thank you for coming out and thank you for taking some time to sit and talk with us. Thank you, Erin. Appreciate it.